Recently I bought a LaCroix Wavemaster oscilloscope. Contacted Teledyne to look at the cost of the JTA software. I was quoted $2,781. The Wavemaster is quite old. It uh, runs Windows 2000 OS, but still a fairly nice scope. Uh, the cost of the software makes it prohibitive. So I'm looking at using LabVIEW to post-process the data to make the phase measurements. In LabVIEW 2014, they started including a jitter analysis toolkit. So before we get into LabVIEW, in the past what I've done to measure phase is I've built this phase discriminator. This is a repurposed uh, old Agilent or HP piece of equipment. Uh, the reason I bought this is it has a precision delay line in here. Uh, it's real nice. and also has these APC7 connectors on it. On the outside here I have these three connectors on the side and the two on the front. Uh, this one here is for my RF input for the signal I'm wanting to analyze. This connects to my reference clock. On the output here I have one for the oscilloscope, the spectrum analyzer, and then the FM output to the RF generator that I'm going to use for a comparison. You can see on the inside of the equipment I have my amplifier here with my phase lock loop and a filter in my mixer and then this connecting down into the delay line underneath and there's also a power supply included in here. There's also two switches on the side that are used to program the gain. So depending on the operating frequency uh, what I'll do is I'll change out this mixer here. To make the measurements I connect the phase discriminator to this 3589A spectrum network analyzer. Uh, this unit is good for uh, 150 megahertz and down to 10 hertz. Nice thing about this equipment is the filters in it are digital uh, so it can actually make this analysis quite quickly. This is the source I plan to evaluate. Uh, this is just an evaluation board that's put out by analog devices. Includes a TCXO made by Fox or we could drive it externally using a low phase noise source. Analog devices supply some software for their phase lock loop. It allows you to run simulations with it. I've set up the simulator to emulate the parts that were included on the eval board. And here we can see the phase jitter using a brick wall filter from 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz is roughly uh, 2.14 picoseconds. This is the phase noise of the carrier frequency measured from 1 kilohertz up to 1 megahertz using the external discriminator that I showed you previously. This is the measurement I obtained from the simulator using a different configuration. As we can see here, the RMS jitter is 5.3 picosecond. Using my external phase discriminator, I measured 4.53 picoseconds. I did some same measurements with this oscillator using an external GPS receiver as a reference clock. That GPS has a very stable, low phase noise reference that I use for all of my test equipment. Running the simulator, I now see a 1.13 picosecond phase jitter and measuring it with my external discriminator I measured 1.627 picoseconds. And here we can see our oscillator that we plan on testing. The WaveMaster allows us to run interleave mode. Uh, this allows us to achieve 20 giga samples or a sample period of 50 picoseconds. These scopes are uh, again they're getting quite old. Uh, can be had fairly cheap now. This particular scope has Ethernet which allows me to attach it to a PC and control the DSO from LabVIEW through the Ethernet rather than using GPIB which would be quite slow to make these measurements. This DSO runs Windows 2000, kind of dates it. Here we can see the output from the clock as I change the amplitude. Here we're outputting minus 3 dB. It's looking at 100 picosecond per division. In this case, the clock is running at 1.7 gigahertz. WaveMaster includes a lot of math. Uh, the one thing it is missing is the jitter analysis. Again, that's an add-on tool kit. It does have some capability as far as measuring jitter from the base package, but not like the JTA analysis. This is the software I put together for the WaveMaster. This program basically brings together all their examples that are included in the toolkit from LabVIEW. I did find some problems with that library. Um, they do provide you most of the source code, so uh, a 
making changes to this library for your own particular needs not much of a problem this is the live data coming from the DSO if I zoom out you can see I've collected 500 nanoseconds of data a 20 giga samples or 50 picosecond sample rate that provides us with 10,000 samples there's two ways to analyze this with LabVIEW we can either do a mean clock calculation or an average clock calculation or we can drive a phase lock loop if I turn on the phase lock loop and we zoom in the green trace is our phase lock loop the purple is our raw data you can see that the software phase lock loop is locked to our data this phase lock loop then would be used to make the calculations for the jitter measurements this is our eye pattern here you can see where I've set up a mask the standard library allows a mask of four points we can configure these points any way we want we also have a maximum and a minimum trip point that we can have so what I'm going to do I'll take our PLL software and I'm going to decrease the amplitude of our waveform okay and what we can see here is now we've actually fallen inside of the boundary and we failed 79 times out of 9,966 total samples fairly nice feature not something that's included in the JTA software here we can see a spectrum analysis of the jitter this is performing an FFT on the phase noise rather than on the amplitude of the signal this is the reference phase noise in uh, dBc per Hertz and we can see it's roughly uh, 315 dB uh, the simulator again showed this at uh, minus 300 dB this is showing the histogram of our phase noise these are the raw counts and this is look at the Gaussian distribution here we can see our RJ number is 6.9 picoseconds the reason this number is so high is I've dropped the amplitude of the output clock so if we increase the amplitude of that clock you can see now it measures 1.89 picoseconds of jitter again from our simulator uh, we were measuring uh, 2.14 picoseconds well within the margin of error unit interval is the period of a half cycle or 255 picoseconds it's calculated depending on our model type that we're using to derive the clock you can see this also changes our Gaussian distribution quite a bit Phase noise is still about 320. The signal is also way outside of the mask area, and our number of failures is back to zero. Again, this package is included free with 2014. You have to download it. Uh, it does seem to work. Uh, I can believe the numbers that we're getting off of it are within the ballpark. Uh, definitely a usable way to go. If you already have LabVIEW, this may be an option rather than purchasing the JTA software. It actually has more features. With the JTA software costing close to $3,000, you're roughly looking at the cost of LabVIEW. So this is actually a fairly cost-effective way to make these types of measurements.